But I tell you, you know, when you say that uh, 60,000, the first Gay Pride March that I was involved in, uh, there were about eight or nine of us. Gosh. And we, we marched up um, uh, to the, to the um, uh, British Embassy because we protested there and then mm -hmm. outside the Department of Justice. And all the secretaries of the Department of Justice were looking out through the first floor windows. <laughs> um, and a lorry drew up and the minister's carpet was fired out on the pavement. And the helper got out and took a look at my placard, uh -huh. which said homosexuals are revolting, uh, which is a double entendre. Yes. I said, James, me <laughs> queer. <laughs> So, uh, Beat machine. Sorry for the delay there. I hope we didn't cause offence. A little bit of bad language, but yes, that's Nick what she said. Out and said, "What about him? We don't give up." Bleep. There you go. Um, uh, wow. A picket, a bleeping picket, mate. And he took up my placard and walked around with us, which was absolutely lovely. Wow. Yeah. And what did a gesture like that mean to you? As you say, you were a handful of young people protesting. Yes. So what did it mean? What was the hope going into well, that day? Well, it meant there was worker solidarity. You know, mm. the, the ordinary people of Ireland identified with us. And uh, in fact, Father Micheál McGrail did a survey in the mid-1960s, long before any of us got going. And uh, that suggested that a majority of Irish people thought that the laws against homosexuality were completely wrong. Mm. And that was a lovely feeling, because yep. I think Irish people have always been decent, compassionate and tolerant, mm. and not judgmental, you know. Well, I mean, you were very focused and very driven, uh, well, you, as you still are, um, but bravery is something that comes along with that. I mean, there's always that, that, that sentiment of backlash. How did you protect yourself in those times when you were... Well, I, I didn't feel brave at all. I found it all immense fun. <laughs> and there was a lot of humour in it. I mean, I had the most wonderful legal counsel, and uh, John Jay, who'd be jowls like a bloodhound, and in serious face, and sending down notes to me, and everybody thought they were legal notes. They were not. They were the most obscene caricatures of the judges. <laughs> um, you have done countless TV interviews uh, since those early days of your activism, but you were the very first openly gay person to be interviewed on television mm. in 1974. Yeah. Lovely Orna O'Connor. Yes, tell us about that experience. There you are. Well, it was, it was very interesting because they said to me that they would photograph me in shadow with my back to the camera. And I said, well, if you do that, you can do it yourself. Because the whole point of my going on television is to show that we're perfectly ordinary human oh, beings, yeah. not a threat, we're not monsters. And if you do that, it'll show me to be a, a kind of a monster. What was Anya's line of questioning mm. like on that <laughs> she day? She asked me, first of all, uh, uh, are you sick? Because the psychiat psychiatric professional decided to put it on the register of diseases. And I said, well, I had a cold last week, but apart from that, I'm oh, quite all right. And, you know, with regard to this business of sickness, um, I said, fine, OK, I'm sick, so I'm going to apply for disability benefit. But they wouldn't give it to me. <laughs> Bastards. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I mean, you'd imagine if you're sick, you should get something for us. <laughs> wow. To sustain you. Yes. Well, but they no sense of humour. Yeah, yeah. But, but you know, that... the Irish Times used to refer to me as the Irish homosexual. You know, the, I was the, the, only, the only one. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little club you're but, in. But now we, we've had Catherine Zappone mm. as a minister. We've had Jerry Bottomer. Uh, we've had uh, the tea, uh, um, Leo Varadkar. Leo Varadkar, yeah. you know. Yeah. And it's, it's wonderful. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think times have come on so much. It, mm. it was actually, it was odd for me to even listening back that it was only 29 years ago that it was still illegal. And I'm 35, so I was when I was born, it was mm. still illegal. That, yeah. hard that is hard yeah. to fathom, mm. you know. Um, uh, actually, but when in the, with the first march that you guys did, it wasn't just a march, it was a protest. Yes. Um, what was it that you wanted the most at that time? Well, we wanted to have the laws changed mm -hmm. uh, because it was a, a considerable insult. I mean, it's not very nice to be defined into criminality mm -hmm. for something that you have as little responsibility for as the colour of your hair. Or, yeah. in my case, the absence of your hair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can you tell us about the Hirschfield Centre, because you were instrumental in creating this safe space, this, yes. uh, you know, this welcoming community for people. But it, with the side of Studio 54, it was really a... Like, it sounded it was fantastic, well, you a mentioned joyous Studio place. 54. We had contracts in the record industry. We had co contracts in the airlines. So we had the latest pressings before they had them 
in wow. Studio 54. We had the most wonderful DJs. Tony Walsh, who's still on the trot, was one. Uh, Vincent Hanley, yeah. Fab Vinnie uh, of Sainted Memory. He was there and he was wonderful. What's this? This Ooh, is a microphone. My, you get your own microphone. microphone. We want a song now that we're talking about <laughs> yeah. uh, all these DJ sets. Oh, oh, Antonio, he's gone away. Left me on me own, all on me own today. And I can go on for 10 minutes. Oh, we can't. If only we had time. If only we had the time. That's out of Joyce's Ulysses. Ah, OK. And we've just ah, had Bloomsday as well. Of course we well. have, yes, yeah. of course. But the centre, what did it mean to well, young the people was at the time? Well, because... Um, and the extraordinary thing is, nobody had thought of it, or yeah. nobody, nobody put any money into it. Mm. I put 15,000 of my own pop money, and wow. in the 1970s, that was a lot Millions, of money. Millions, yes. Um, and um, we had a restaurant, we had a discotheque, we had a library, we had counselling rooms. It was just wonderful, yeah. wonderful. And my great friend, the late Dr Noel Brown, who'd been an, a, a prophetic minister for health, uh, opened it for us. Yeah, oh, wow. he was wonderful. Wow! And it, it became quite the, the the spot to go to. Even a lot of famous faces wanted to come down, but that was they only did, if you I recognized did, them. I didn't know who they were. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, Freddie Mercury came in, and I said, have, "Can I see your membership card, please?" <laughs> <laughs> and I stopped Elton John. As wow! Well. Uh, he was trying to come in, he... but I knew he was somebody because he had a, a flunky going in front of him with um, a jar of. Freshly squeezed orange juice, juice and a bottle of champagne. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's the way to do it. Um, as Kamal mentioned, uh, tomorrow marks 29 years since homosexuality was decriminalised in this country. As you said, you've gone from... Is it really? Yes, yeah. It better be. Let's do the research. That's, that's what I was told. Oh, no, no I picked it. Right. <laughs> it is, it is, it is. Um, when you think back to those, th those early days outside the British Embassy, as you said, there's a handful of you. There was Mick yes. off the truck. And now... We are looking ahead to a weekend of nationwide celebrations. I think that how is lovely. How do you feel? Like, how oh, do you... I, I, I feel so proud yeah. to be Irish mm. because we have led the way. I mean, we were the first person to decide by democratic vote to accept gay marriage. Yeah. Well done yeah. to the Irish people. Um, and uh, I, I think we've always been. We've always been like that. Yeah. I know you said before we came on air that you don't like looking back, but no. do you think it's important that the next generation do know of the work that you did with your peers back then? I don't know. I'm a little bit divided because, I mean, I, I don't want to be replacing one burden with another and making people feel grateful and they have to tap their heads. Oh, there we are. There There's you the are. Day of Pride March. Isn't that absolutely lovely? And you see, the lovely thing is that there are so many different people. It's not just gay people. It's their families mm. and grandmothers and people pushing prams and all this kind of stuff. Look mm. at you there. You have served as Grant Marshal. What I was did. that experience I did. like? And I had a wonderful, I had a wonderful uh, Morris Minor, open top Morris Minor, and a huge umbrella in the rainbow colours. And we stopped on uh, O'Connell Bridge because the car broke down and then four lovely muscular young men started <laughs> pushing it. And an old snotty man with his wife um, uh, who was wearing uh, trousers uh, said to me, why aren't you wearing a skirt? And I said, I think that's a question that should more properly address to your wife. <laughs> <laughs> Because I think a, a, laugh, there. a laugh really punctures everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, know, I remember the, when I was in the Senate, first of all, um, what, 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 this very nice fellow, Willie Farrell, who was a senator from Sligo, uh, he denounced me and so on, but I wasn't there behind my back and so on. And the next day they tried to make him apologise. And uh, I said, listen, will you stop torturing poor Willie? I mean... Um, you can only be insulted by somebody you respect. And <laughs> Willie knows perfectly well I've no respect for him at all. <laughs> oh, don't, you're a ray of sunshine. Thank you so much. Thank it's you. so interesting to look back on those early days and the legacy. Well, it is lovely to be of. here, and thank you very much, both of you, for inviting me.